Hello people and welcome to another video. I'm here at the Bushcraft Show 2017 and I thought I want, I'd like to bring you guys along and the way I want to shoot this video is I want to be a bit more specific this year and I want to take you through my journey at the Bushcraft Show and show you some of the stalls very specifically that I enjoy the most and maybe talk to a few people along the way as well and get a feeling and show you guys what the Bushcraft Show is all about because I think there's a persona of this show in particular that there's a lot of trade stalls and it's all about marketing and it's all about selling products but it's absolutely not there is so much knowledge and so much skill being shared at this event and that's what it's all about for me so I want to take you around and meet some of the people that I'm massive, big fans of myself obviously show, show you some of the gear that I like as well and just some of my favourite stalls that I like to browse and peruse and buy things from and we'll see how we get on so I hope you enjoy this journey and come along for the ride so firstly we have Dave Watson, the owner of Woodland Survival Crafts, an absolute master of the bow drill and hand drill, anything friction fire related, this guy's got it down to a T, and I always enjoy watching his demonstrations every year. Spend some more amount of downward pressure on, and the slope will come about now, but I'm not having to work hard. Okay, in fact just to really highlight that I'm now going to slow down and slow down some more, but the smoke's coming out. Because I'm in control, I've got suitable equipment. So, okay. So basically what I'm doing at this stage is I'm drilling to get the full diameter of the drill embedded into the baseboard. <coughs> the reason for that is if I cut the notch out, as if by magic a drill appears. Fantastic. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Okay, lots of ember. It may look pretty, but in fact, it's inefficient. So, now what I'm going to do is some long drawn out blows. Oh, first blow. <laughs> I would like to say, in all of that, we've that. Flatten the back off. Flatten that back. Yeah, that was another mess up as well. Okay, so you can flatten it by doing that. Uh -huh. And what you really after is is a sharp edge both sides. So you can both use sides. it for five steel. Yeah. That's, I yeah. polished that out there, didn't I? Yeah, you've polished yeah. it out. Yeah. And, and down here as well. Yeah. If you can you know, just get it nice. You can use it to shave fire sticks, yeah. Yeah. sticks and all yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, you can use it for the, the back for scraping and yeah. bark. Rob, tell us some, uh, tell us some falconry things back about owls. Go. Well, uh, as I explained to you earlier, uh, actually owls have lopsided ears, so it helps them calculate uh, speed and distance when they're hunting, so they can actually close in and attack their prey more accurately. That's amazing. Thank you. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Island of Rob, you're into fitness and DDP yoga. Come and give me a look. What a plug. Then we settled down to listen to a, a talk from Paul Kirtley discussing uh, wood splitting with several different axe types. You'll all know I'm a big fan of Paul Kirtley and his ethos around bushcraft. So you'll notice throughout the video there are several places where uh, I'm listening to Paul Kirtley or his team from Frontier Bushcraft who I must say are absolutely fantastic at what they do. Dip on Cianagi, yeah, shoulder throw, yeah, yeah we're gonna, or a drop knee, we're going to do that. There. So that's a more efficient tool and you're going to be able to split knottier stuff but the general purpose axes still do a very good job nah, that's not going to do it very easily so if we were making a television program I'd get another bit now and we cut it so it split beautifully there you go, like that see we just cut to that you don't see the first couple of fails I'm a, I'm a bushcraft hero. <laughs> Next contract. It's a bit rotten in places, this wood, but it's a bit damp. Notice I'm throttling it here. I'm not doing it from back here. I've got that swing. I've got the counterbalance with the handle. It's all basic stuff, but everything else is built on the basics. 
Nothing too, nothing just too fancy. Small proportion. Yeah, Lovely. thank you. That is collapsible. That's a battle spoon. Battle spoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is, that is cool. Yeah. Do some of the entertaining the ones. Do some of the entertaining. Do the goblin dance. Do the goblin Ask Spoon some questions. Like the goblin dance. He's doing his whole thing. He's doing the technical thing. What? Anything? Are you doing bushcraft? Ask Spoon a question. Which is your favourite spoon? What's the terminal flight I've lost to you this morning? I like this one for the twists on it. But I do like when I started doing a little bit. I mean, I'm not very good at doing the, the actual chipping out of it. Does that screen flip out to the side? Um, is that... Oh, God. I don't know. I, I don't quite... <laughs> I wouldn't ever say I've got a favourite spoon. massive fan of the band that's about to come on now and it's Journey Home so we all settled down the whole group of us and uh, everyone had been practicing the songs for the last 12 months so we really gave Journey Home a good show and uh, <laughs> it was an absolutely fantastic experience uh, I can't wait to go and see them again but yeah um, just take a little listen to some of the music it's absolutely fantastic that's Journey Home Peter, what are we doing now? We are going to the sauna. We are going to the sauna. I don't know why. We're going to go and sweat out some alcohol. Let's go. Let's do it. How does this work? Do we have to take our clothes off? Uh, camera will hold this. Yeah, I've got a bag. I'll chuck it in the bag in a minute. It's a lot hotter in here today. Yeah, it's hot. We take some uh, bird's leaves water here. And first we are going to 
warm up and uh, wet our bird sleeves and take the steam out of it. Uh, the steam is called Löölö. Soon you can smell the bird sleeves. Oh. That's very nice smell. Can't smell it. Okay. It'll open up your lungs. Not yet, but it's pretty so sweet. sweet. Oh yeah. No, that, I can't. I can't smell anything. Oh yeah. Face. So hit my you, face. You must. <laughs> you that just hit me in the face. Yeah. Pop, pop me mm -hmm. As you can see, Brian is a little bit more awake now. Oh yeah. Oh. I feel it better already. Yeah. I'm, I am. This is this is so. It's ah, oh, it's the feeling. Yeah. Everything oh, yeah. just feels getting a little bit sweaty. Yeah. Then you go to sauna. Then you go to sauna. Then you come come around around and uh, that's the that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Shove that in your face again. Just smell it. Yeah. It, it does smell it. Does, it does, it, like, when you breathe it in. This is the this is the real good stuff. This is like a this is like a shot of espresso. This bit is. It is. It is. Let's do it. Oh. So when you're at the bushcraft show, and you really need to wake up. Get some of this. And just, shove, just shove your face in. Just it. shove your face in it. Yeah, yeah. Only way I wake up in the morning in 2017. <laughs> So that was Savota uh, Fini Finnish saunas. I'm a little bit dazed because it was a marvelous experience. These are the these are the saunas. Hot rocks, birch leaves, birch water, and they also do some pretty awesome packs as well. Very nice packs that I quite like the look of. And Jack's also looking at those as well. So here we are at the Frontier Bushcraft store, which is mine and Peter's. Uh, Favourite choice for instruction, we've done a couple of courses with them now. So they've got the, the winter hot tent here, set up. And then you've got Ray Goodwin over there, and you've got Ray Goodwin's pink canoe here. It brings back terrible memories of the River Spay. Only joking. And then there's a shelter here, which we helped set up um, a couple of days ago. We helped we helped the guys build this, and we helped them set this up. So, really like those banners. And then Henry, one of the guys that works for Paul, is giving a. Rob and Peter a little demonstration on dental care when as and about and then I go over and talk to Spoons and uh, we have a bit of a conversation about sharpening knives. What are you doing? I'm just sharpening up yeah. a couple of, couple of knives ready for one of the demos I'm doing. You're carving demos? Yeah. When are you doing the dropping sessions? The drop-in sessions that's going to be at half past one today to about half past three. So people can just drop in and come and do some carbon with me, really. And it's all a deal that is because uh, one of my one of our friends was saying that he wants to do a bit of carving with someone, but he doesn't want to kind of commit to like an hour or two. Yeah. And I said, oh, head over to Spoons because it's just drop in. You just you can just come in, come and do what you want. want. You can stay for five minutes if you want. You can stay for the whole two hours, and we can just do some carving, really. And carve whatever whatever you want and I can help out as much as I can and <laughs> that's what it's all about man yeah. yeah share some knowledge and you can get people a little bit further up the ladder with their carving hopefully sounds good to me oh, to me mate so, uh, but the, you know when that, that wave hit the boat like that the dog fell across the boat and it was the boat that caused you to fall in they get a discount on the next course <laughs> I've, I've fallen in simply as been sat on a seat, spun round and just gone over the side. Now that's once in blood it's immediately become a kilometre and a bit. So the, num the weight we can carry on the portage first time, and because the boats are so light, actually we'll probably take a sack and a boat. And then we have a fine demonstration from Mr. Ray Goodwin regarding portaging canoes and packing your canoe for expeditions. Something that me and Emily were very interested in, so we soaked that up. And then we got Ray to give us a quick demonstration on a, a better way for me and Emily to lift the canoe together. Because it's something we had been struggling with. All right, so that's a lot easier to get it up there with two. Okay, to put it down, we'll reverse the process, drop the back, 
Oh, and if we're on a long portage, we can swap over. So if you go behind me and support it. And now I can take off. Yeah, but now we'll put it down. So we'll take there and we're going to take it that way. Yeah, okay, away you go. Okay, so here we are outside Ben and Lois Orford. Possibly one of my favourite traders in terms of knife making, canvas work, leather work. Been a fan for many years, so I'm going to take you inside, maybe speak, speak to Ben a little bit, and show you all the stuff that I love. So, first off, we have these beautiful bushcraft blankets. I uh, me and Emily bought one of these earlier today, actually. I think it was this colour we bought. So, that was something particular I actually love. And then we've got the old Buffy hats. You will have seen the famous Outdoor Life of Brian hat. That was bought from here two years ago now, I think. Then we've got all of Lois's leather work. So, I think these were some new pouches that were designed this year. They've recently bought in dump pouches. Had a look at those earlier. I absolutely love the branding of Ben's stuff. Let's take a little look at that. I am absolutely in love with Ben Orford's knives. It is the one thing in bushcraft that I want. Um, I have pretty much all the kit I ever need and I haven't bought any kit for a very long time now. Um, but a Ben Orford knife is something I would absolutely love to own. Uh, one day I will save up and, and make that purchase. I love the Nomad so much. Thank you. One day. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking at the moment. It will what, be. one day? Yeah, one day. They're nice, aren't they? They are gorgeous. I might get one specially made. How much are they? Okay. Look at that one. Have a look at a medium. Sort of safety is the fact that the heel of the axe will actually make contact with the chopping block, so it will prevent it going too deep. So I'll just rest it on there. You've got to be a bit careful of this hand. And then we just put a few nicks in, and then we can start working back to that little slot. And once I get the axe in, I almost just leave Something I actually found interesting was uh, actually making this video, it forced me to sit and watch some of the demonstrations that I typically wouldn't watch due to the fact that I kind of thought and pretty much knew what they were talking about. I didn't want to waste my time watching it again. But some of the things I watched, I actually learned a lot from. Um, it's interesting how much you forget after a couple of years. And uh, it really kind of reinstated with me some of the basics that I've, I've kind of lost over the past couple of years. So I'm going to start rehoning those skills. And it's really made me want to start practicing the basics again. So that's what I'm kind of aiming to do in the next 12 months. So overall, the Bushcraft Show 2017 was definitely the best one yet, in my opinion. Um, it definitely had some, something to do with the fact that I just had all my friends around me, and it was just a, such a positive, loving atmosphere, and we had such a fantastic time all together. But not just that, I got to meet a lot of old faces, I got to make a lot of new friends, and meet some people that I haven't had chance to meet for several years. And I just got a chance to catch up with everyone, and overall it was just a wonderful experience. I thoroughly enjoyed myself, so thank you to the uh, organisers for doing it. And I hope to see you all there again next year in 2018 for another fantastic show.